Hi, in the 2022 edition of the HCL International Bridge Tournament, one of the highest prize money tournaments in the world bridge calendar, I was the editor of the daily bulletins. On one of the days, apart from the official photographers, there also was a video team at the venue. They asked me if I wanted to avail of that facility. I took that as a good opportunity to record the thoughts of some prominent British players and officials. There was a limited window, both in terms of availability of players, many being busy in play, and resources, time, space, mics, cameras, and so on. However, I managed to interview five players' officials. It took a good deal of time, weeks in fact, for me to get, check and process the big video files on my laptop. Finally, this week, I was able to produce a satisfactory output. The five players were Hima Devra, Vice President of the Bridge Federation of India, Pooja Batra, Joint Secretary of the BFI, and the chairwoman of finance committee, Subhash Gupta Guruji, a grandmaster and a double international having represented both Canada and India in various international tournaments, K. Venkatraman, Dadi Venki, a grandmaster who has represented India on many occasions, and Dr. Walia, 92 years young. These were the five players we filmed. Dr. Wahalia has lived and played serious bridge in many countries. He was an organizer, a director, a capable scorer when the computers were not in use, and a teacher in the 1960s and later on. Most importantly, he is an analyst with a sharp mind and an excellent bridge player. As the year 2022 comes to an end, let us pay attention to the thoughts of these five experts. That will give us a good idea as to where the bridge is headed in 2023 and what more needs to be done to popularize the game. The videos themselves, as they appear here, begin directly with a question and end with an answer. So, let me take this opportunity to yet again thank each of these players who made themselves available on a busy semi-final day. I hope you enjoy the videos. What are the new developments in Bridge? Have you noticed any clusters of strong players forming anywhere? Well, I do find a lot of difference because I started playing my bridge in first thing I began to learn in uh, 1999. So that was almost now more than 50 years, but of course with a lot of break because uh, I had other things uh, more uh, important things but during that period because that is the time when Mr. James Shah a well-known player who was my sort of a coach and the mentor and he was teaching and there was no way of having something like BBO or anything on a computer so all the notes were handwritten and one has to write notes after notes and pile them and every time you played if there was a convention change then it is another note and another learning by heart and that has now changed a lot and I find now the youngsters because that was if, uh, for me it was not that I was very young but neither very old it was the right time for me to begin a new career but now I find even the school going college going students have much more advantage because of computer uh, 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 eye technology and the BBO so they're grasping and absorbing the knowledge and uh, getting information is much much more than what we went through so I don't know how to compare it's a vast difference it's like a chalk and cheese so 
Uh, there is no comparison. So you do believe that we do have great tools to analyze hands and people are able to use them, which we didn't have to respect. No, okay. not at all. Yeah, right. Are the bridge tournaments organized in new ways? Have you come across any hybrid events that combine the online and on-ground platforms in a, in a nice manner? Or do you think it is sometime in the future? Well, it is definitely improving, uh, maybe at a shorter scale, in spite of having all the uh, uh, immunity uh, uh, things available and uh, all the platform are open but I think it should progress much faster which is not happening which should uh, now let me ask you about uh, bidding methods are you satisfied with the methods that we have today uh, are you aware of people still developing new methods coming up with systems or do you think it has completely stopped because in 70s and 80s a lot of systems came up. Now in 2010, 2020, uh, what is your feeling? Do, have you come across new methods? Oh yes, much more and very fast. Okay. I mean every time you play a tournament with certain convention and the method, later on you realize this is not the right one and let's improve on that and against the again the convention changes against the system changes and it gets modified lot of people are having the youngsters are training from uh, mr kokish mm -hmm. which is given a final tuned to the specially standard method because not he doesn't play precision or a strong club he is the uh, champ in the standard so they have have got a lot of methods but it is not as simple as we learnt in a thing it's a bit of a transfer retransfer complicated so i think half the time your attention is gone on what is being bid whether it's right or wrong or what this thing i don't know maybe i belong to the old school but i find that simpler to an extent simpler it should be competitive but simpler then your mind is also focused on playing uh, that is specially for the newcomers for beginners because they are spending more time and energy on method and then they lack on defense and the hand play okay so so this is something like saying that we should have less ritualistic bridge Initially. <laughs> okay, fine. Thank you. Uh, there's something else that uh, I have been worried about, hmm. and that is about uh, bridge law, ethics, propriety. Are we placing too much emphasis on things like ethics and propriety, and too little on fun, frolic, excitement? What is your view? Uh, I do agree, but I I don't want to be biased. But basically, uh, the Indian community do not follow the certain norms or certain uh, ethics in everything. A simple thing: when the food is served, there is only one lady, but nobody in the queue will say, "Madam, you take a plate." And same thing, they don't bother who is in out. Same way when they are playing, they don't have anything. So I feel in order to keep them disciplined, uh, they should have some ethics. Most of the foreign countries, of course, they do go wild and all kinds of things. But on an average, they have certain ethics towards the game. They know what it is. So unfortunately, in our country, I I think the laws have to be stricter to follow the ethics. Okay, thank you. Uh, the other thing I am worried about is, is the bridge becoming a game only for the top 0.1% or whatever or if I put it that bridge is finishing out people with limited means. What would be your reply? Well, I would say for competitive bridge, perhaps it is getting slightly limited because the finance are involved and uh, they need always the sponsor to come and play the thing. 
uh, which has become a big racket now. But those who play for fun, the rubber bridge is equally uh, at a good high level. They are enjoying yes. and that's where the fun, the frolic, the everything is there, you know, and more relaxing. The, so, this bridge is taxing when you play at a high level. So I, I presume you enjoyed that fun and excitement. I and still, family setting yes. And you would probably like people to do that too. Yeah, yeah. I, I still enjoy that. My okay. best of the friends are not a competitive player, so we have fun. And but when I play like this, I'm under um, like a big pressure. A big pressure. Okay. Finally, is there something you would like to add? I would say that, uh, you know, there should be some method where these youngsters and who are underprivileged and so are the ladies who have got the capacity, who have the zest and the fire to learn but haven't got the uh, proper means to come up. They are dying to come up and it has become like now that those who are up, they are getting up, they are getting absorbed by the uh, sponsor and they are given the opportunity all the time. I think somebody has to give the opportunity to youngsters to uh, see that they are also blossom in a nice way without spending the uh, getting involved in the financial thing which I did very often I did encourage every time newcomers youngsters but then again you get into the uh, racket of the competition and this mm. thing so you leave them aside and then you get into it. But if I have a choice, I won't play, but I would definitely sponsor a team of a youth people and say, okay, go ahead, enjoy and play this game and see what happens. Most of them of the same level. Nobody should be better and worse. That's a great offer. Yeah. I'll keep that in mind. Yes, and that's what I'm trying to do now as a vice president give more opportunities to the ladies. I'm trying to do the mixed more so they have a better competition and not like the crabs in the same well. And the youth in their own, like Anshul, but I always tell him Anshul, you find somebody of your level to mm. an extent because he's gone little higher. Mm. But uh, so, and then I said, you form a team and enjoy yourself instead of right. playing against competent. Yeah.